Welcome into Let's Be Honest. I'm your host, Kristen Cavallari, and we have Justin Anderson back. Woo woo, hey. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, guys? <laughs> um, I hope you guys really liked the Montana Boys last week. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> um, good timing on that, too, because actually, Justin just met Montana. So I know I called Montana his real name last week, but that, that was an interview. People episode. love to point that out. I know. So even my kids asked me why I call him Montana on the podcast. When I'll say it again. I think it's cute because that's your podcast thing. Yeah, because I've never referred to anyone as their real name. And so I want to keep in spirit with the podcast. I mean, and last week was different because it was an interview episode. I treated that like an interview episode because it was. But now when I'm talking about other people, I'm going to go back to referring to him as Montana. I like that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So Justin and Scoot just met Montana for the first time. We did. We went to the um, Preds game. It's so funny because me, you, and Scoot do so much together. Yeah. Like we travel together. We have we're like a little family, like the three of us, or whatever. And it was funny. Like Scoot was nervous. Like Aww. before we were getting ready and we we're going to the um, to the Predators hockey game. Scoot was like, "I'm really nervous for some reason." I'm like, "What are you?" Because Scoot never says he's ner- nervous. I'm like, well, "About what?" And he's like, well, "What if we just don't like like him?" Yeah. He's like, "Because we can tell that Kristen like really." really likes this guy (laughs) anyways long story short we went wait but really quickly for years we've been saying we're like whoever the fourth is like they better be fucking awesome because it's a big deal because i would say we are very close the three of us and we travel really well together like it's so easy like it was even like kristen do you need a boyfriend i know (laughs) literally with traveling i'm like i don't know bringing someone else into the mix is gonna really change things it is and i mean (laughs) anyone can relate to that like when you're you have a little core group of friends or whatever bringing in a new person is it's scary it's it's hard (laughs) um so we have been nervous about it for a while um and then we met mark the other day so i want to know and that's it (laughs) bye thanks for listening (laughs) so i want to know okay so well here i'll tell you okay we'll get to that point so what happened was yeah so i've got preds tickets which we've told you guys about many times and so the four of us went mark came to my house first we hung out with my kids for a while he came over at like three so my kids came home from school we all hung out and then we met you guys at the preds game so we met at like an hour before the game to eat they have this lounge called the lexus lounge which is like this bar and there's food and you can go and and hang out so we met down there I was nervous too I think I texted you earlier in the day and I was like I'm nervous just because obviously you want your friends your best friend to like the guy that you're with were you actually nervous I was a little nervous yeah because um Mark has met my kids obviously and my mom and he's met a lot of the girls that work for me but I haven't started really introducing him to my friends necessarily right so you're like you know and obviously your opinion is very important so yeah I was a little nervous um okay so we are at the we were there earlier than you so we're waiting there whatever and he comes up I'm not trying to build this up like it's such a big deal because like I was (laughs) excited I mean I thought it was so weird that I hadn't met him yet and obviously like I know so much about him because you and I talk like crazy people with each other um so when he came up I felt like I knew him right away I immediately like gave him like a big hug or whatever I feel like I've known you forever and he was like same thing here's the thing though and like I'm just gonna be shallow for a second the most gorgeous (laughs) person I've ever seen in my life like Scoot's unbelievably attractive Uh, you know yes so so I'm not saying like whatever but um he's ridiculous it's insane he's He's hotter in person you guys which I don't even know how that's possible everything is perfect on him everything it's like he was sculpted like it's he's chiseled like every little feature on him is it doesn't look real it looks like a cartoon when we were sitting there talking I was like looking I'm like it looks like his face is like painted like he's really beautiful and it's the kind of beautiful that like you have to tell someone like, you know what we're doing right now is so freaking shallow. I really know that. Like not everything is about We're going to get to like the, (laughs) but when I was sitting there, we first started talking to him, like you are so good looking. And I hate (laughs) doing that with really good looking people because they don't want to hear it all the time. But it's like, you kind of have to say it when they're that good You've got to acknowledge the elephant in the room. (laughs) Yeah. Like when, when your mind is thinking about, like I think about like the first time I met a couple celebrities in my career, like I was so excited for two women in particular, Jennifer Aniston and Kim Basinger. Cause when mm-hmm. I was a kid, Kim Basinger was the hottest woman in the world. When yeah. I first did her hair, I, I was like stuttering and I was like <laughs> nervous and I had to tell her like, blah, blah, whatever. But it Aww. feels like the same thing. Yeah. Like Mark, I was like, you're so 
hot. Like you, so- you guys, like he wakes up and I'm like, how do you look like that when you just woke up? Like his little mullet is like a little messy. And I'm just like, it's, in- it's insane. Not only is he like beautiful, <laughs> but the biggest standout to me is there's like such a sweetness to him. Like yeah. he has like this like twinkle in his eye. Like his little smile is like a really thoughtful smile. Like, yeah. cause there's hot people who you talk to him for three minutes. And you're Ugh. like, Oh my God, they're like a fucking douche. And yeah. like, or like you can tell they're kind of like, like Not they a, know they're yes. super hot. Like, like I don't think Mark realizes how hot he no, is. No, like, that's the thing. Like his little like grin and the way his eyes twinkle yeah. and like He's just a really, really great guy. And I'm not kidding. I mean, the four of us were like crazy that night, by the way. Like, we never left that table. We went to like the last 10 minutes of the game. No, literally, we're like, should we go watch the game for a few minutes? Probably. We sat down there for so long, but it really felt like immediately it was just like the four of us. And him and Scoot are a really good combination. Well, which I've I had a you, feeling. I've told you, Mark reminds me a lot of Scoot. I mean, obviously, the age, they're both younger, they're both gorgeous, but like, they both have this incredibly calming energy where you just like, it's like a very grounding, stabilizing feeling that I love so much. And I've said that to you. I'm like, Mark literally is Scoot. It's crazy. And I'm smiling because it's like, in my own head, I've always thought that like that would be so good for you. You've said it for <laughs> you. Like, I've said it for you. So- also said someone younger. I was like, there's no fucking way At I would all. ever. Yeah. And I had nothing to do with this. No. I'm so afraid that like your followers are going to be like, Justin made this happen. I had nothing to do with this. And I by w- the way, I have nothing to, to like, I can never steer you in any direction. No, Justin has literally tried to be like, I think you should like give this guy another chance. I'm like, literally and fuck she'll off. she'll never Which, listen. I would like, never. I have no say. So it's so no. interesting to me, like as your best friend to kind of just see this happen. And I was like, I seriously always saw something like this happening. So meeting him, it felt so comfortable and natural. Like, yeah, it was just easy right away. Yeah. And Scoot and him, they really do have very similar, uh, similar energies yeah. and uh, like a look and like a feel to them. Mm-hmm. Like immediately their conversations really, I mean the fact that they're both like, they both knew it. They grew up with Amish people. Both oh yeah. I forgot about that conversation. I mean, anyone <laughs> listening, you should try to date a guy who's grew up around the Amish because they were <laughs> really guys. great people come from it. <laughs> but um, they both kind of grew up in like about. small towns or whatever. And yeah. um, there's like a calmness and a sweetness, um, well, obviously it's like an innocent, an innocence, but they also just like appreciate the right things in life. You know what I mean? They're just like, good guys good guys yeah and I want to say really quickly I because we were just having this conversation where two if I met Mar- I, oh, I think I actually called him Mark a minute ago <laughs> if, I met, if I met Montana two years ago I never would have given him a chance in fact there was another like 26 year old football player at the time remember this who asked me out and I was like there's no way like you're oh, so yeah. gorgeous but I was like but you're way too young for me so I think it's just interesting I really am a big believer in timing is everything because it took me having to date a lot of these like high status like guys with a lot of money um or, well I, all of that but also I feel like I went on dates with all different types of guys in the last few years like I really experienced every type of guy I tried to give everyone an opportunity or you know what I mean and <laughs> <laughs> everyone gets around everyone got around <laughs> Actually, not at all. It was like literally (laughs) not at all. Um, But but so because of that and because I kept running up against walls being like, I don't like any of these guys. I think I finally when when Montana came into my life was at a place where I was like, fuck it. Like, I'll just see where this goes. And even when I first met him, we've talked about this. I really thought like maybe he would just be like a fun flirt. Like maybe we would hook up kind of a thing. But then and you said this with Scoot, too. Like when you do meet them, you're like, whoa, wait, there's like something real here. And that's something to be said about when people always like people always say, like, I want this, this and this or this is my type or whatever. And I've heard women like especially like, doing hair in my chair saying those things like women who are like single in LA because LA is so hard yeah. for certain people to date or whatever. And I'd have these women in my chair complaining and they're like, I want this, this, and this. I'm like, God, like, well, good luck. yeah, good luck with that, first of all. <laughs> but I feel like we really don't know who we're going to connect with. And sometimes it's the complete opposite. Mm-hmm. I do know for Scoot, you know, I've said this before, my ex right before Scoot was 15 years older than yeah. me. And then Scoot's way younger than me. <clears> so I went the totally different and I never thought that it would happen. I was like, oh, well, I'll just hook up with him. He's so yeah. hot. Like we're going to go out like for a hot date. Because yeah. I was so over dating at that point. I had been single. Oh my for- God, which is where I was too. Yes. When I met Mark, I was like, I'm done dating. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And you get to that place where you're like, I hate whatever. And yeah. then I was, I, I, Scoot and I got matched up or whatever. 
And I was like, I'll just have fun with this. Like, I'll go with like a hot young guy. Like, maybe we'll have like hot sex, like whatever. And I sat down with him and I'm not kidding, not to be cheesy, but like within minutes, I was like, I'm in love with this guy. Like, it was a feeling that I had never felt before. It was just like a calmness. I'm a crazy person. You are in your own sense. Mm -hmm. You know, we're big personalities. We get excited about everything. So sometimes we think that we're attracted to people who have similar vibes, you know, or who have big personalities. And Scoot was the first person, even like, I didn't have any friends that were as calm as Scoot. Oh, yeah. Mark's Montana is easily the calmest person in my life. Yeah, he has the same exact type of energy. And I just remember that feeling when I sat with Scoot and I was like, I've never felt something like this. And then it just kept going and kept getting better and better and better. Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's like it does just keep getting better and better. And like every time I hang out with him, it's like I like him more and more. And that's I mean, obviously, with everyone I've dated in the last few years, it was like I would hang out with someone for a weekend. I'd be so excited. And then I'd hang out with them again. I'd be like, oh, I hate them. That was really I how never it li- it Always. That's how it I happened. never liked anyone for more than two weeks. I was just <laughs> always waiting for like the text that was just like, I can't fucking stand yeah, him. Like, like, I, it. He's driving and me And I'm crazy. like, Kristen, give him another chance. Or like, what, what about I'm this? I'm like, nope, I'm done. I'm done. But the other thing is like, you shouldn't have to like question so much so early, you know, or like um, things that bother you. You shouldn't try to like put them aside because you think that you, whatever. I think that it can be easy. By the way, I do too now. And I never was in that camp of like a relationship could be easy, but I think when you find the right person, it a hundred percent should be and can be. I love talking to you guys about Nutrafol. You know, mothers dedicate themselves to the well-being of their families, often putting their own needs on the back burner. With endless responsibilities, it's crucial for mothers to prioritize self-care, even in the simplest ways. Supporting their hair health can be a simple yet meaningful step towards feeling their best and becoming their healthiest selves. Just as they care for others, gifting Nutrafol this Mother's Day will serve as a gesture of appreciation and encouragement for the special mother in your life to also prioritize her own wellness journey. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement with over 1 million people seeing thicker, stronger, faster growing hair with less shedding. Everyone's root cause of hair thinning is different, so a one-size-fits-all approach to hair growth doesn't cut it. Nutrafol has multiple formulas that are tailored to give your hair what it needs to grow throughout different stages, such as postpartum and menopause, as well as different lifestyles such as plant-based diets. So this Mother's Day, share the gift of growth with a special woman in your life. Whether it's your mother, aunt, or friend, Nutrafol is a unique and thoughtful gift with lasting impact. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering my listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code HONEST. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com, promo code HONEST. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code HONEST. Okay, here's a brand that I've loved for years and years. My little fashionistas, it's Revolve. We all know it. We all love it. There's just something about them. They're my go-to destination for style because I love, they have all my favorite brands, but I also love their curated list that they have. So festival season is upon us. They've got a whole list for that. You want date night clothes? They've got a list for that. They just make it really easy, really accessible, really shoppable. You can always find what you need no matter what stage of your life you're in. I'm going to Stagecoach, which I'm very excited about. So I was definitely just browsing their festival and concert link. And they've got really good stuff. I also love that it's not just clothes. They have accessories. They have shoes, they have makeup and other products, you know, jewelry. They've got all of your needs in one place, which I love. They have 500 brands spanning high-end, emerging, and exclusive labels in fashion, beauty, and home goods. They consistently offer the latest and most sought-after trends in fashion. They are authentic, high-quality products. They have new arrivals daily, so you can always go back and check. They have inclusive sizing options, personalized product recommendations, those curated edits that I was talking about in collections, to help you find styles that suit your specific preferences and needs. And guys, they've got amazing customer service. They have fast and free shipping and returns. We love it. So guys, from last minute trips to event dressing and seasonal refreshes, Revolve has you covered with fast two-day shipping and hassle-free returns all on them. So go to revolve.com slash honest today to shop my top picks for the season 
And don't forget to check out the festival edit, which I was just talking about while you're there. It just dropped and it is so good. That's R-E-V-O-L-V-E dot com slash H-O-N-E-S-T. You know what's interesting too? Okay, so I, like in December, we talked about it. I was like, I'm done dating. I think I had gone on a couple, like we were in LA and then New York and I went on a date in LA, which I actually didn't even know was a date, but a date in LA. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it was. And then a date in New York and I was like, I'm literally done. I can't do it anymore. I had gone on a bunch in the fall, as you guys know. But in the same time, while I did take off a couple of months of dating, I also I'm like a big believer in manifesting. But um, I had read that you have to like make space for someone new to come in. So, I, you know, you can pin people on your phone. Right. So I had I've always had an equal number of people pinned, which has been nine people. And I decided to take someone out of my out of my pinned people. Really? So I had an empty space. I had one empty space for a pinned person and I cleared a drawer in my <gasps> closet. And then literally he came into my You're life. You're a cuckoo bird. Isn't you that... didn't tell me that. Yeah. Because I don't have an assistant anymore. My assistant used to be pinned. She moved. So I took her off. But did you think about that when you pulled the pin yes, off? Yes. I said, I'm not going to put someone else in there because I want to save it for a minute. I actually think that's genius. <clears throat> and, 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 lit- and now it's, you know, Montana. Isn't that isn't that wild? I so I am now like oh that show works. <laughs> well, you're the queen of that stuff. I, I mean, am. you really are the queen of like putting that energy out there. I mean, I've seen you do so many things that I'm I've like, manifested some crazy shit for us. Crazy. Yeah. I think that's so interesting about setting the space though for uh-huh. it. Making space that makes sense to me. That wow. especially like the pin phone because like you look at that every day and I always noticed this empty spot for it and I'm so like particular a little OCD maybe we're like everything has to be perfect so that was like a big thing to see every time I opened up my phone and now it's full <laughs> so another thing I want to mention too and then we can go back to the story of like actually hanging out with Montana but so again in the fall in December I dated someone he was an actor <sighs> Which we'll call him. I don't even fucking know. <laughs> what can we call him? Gay boy? Uh, <laughs> no, no. Just you can't say that. <laughs> Wolverine. Wolverine. Okay, we'll call him. That's a good one. Wolverine. And um, I had actually met him years and years ago. You liked him. Like you were a fan of loved. his. Yeah, we loved. And <laughs> on paper. On, on paper. So he came to Nashville once or twice. I went out with him once. You went out with him twice maybe it was it was another like two day stint with this guy yeah it must have been okay so <clears throat> he came to nashville and well actually let me back up we had been talking for probably a week or t- a couple weeks before he came and it that was all great but he would send me these pictures it was like everything was great but then he would send me photos and the faces he was making and just the it was the weirdest thing like like baby face like you know what it was it was very needy it was it gave me the vibe of like tell me you love me like love me love me like mommy issue type shit you guys one was also a little girly i mean i'll be a little honest. girly or you say girly i say a little gay yeah it felt a little bit gay i mean i don't want to push a label onto anyone but it was definitely gay i mean it, it was I've never off s- man yeah, it definitely was. The weird thing about him, though, was in person, I thought he was fabulous. So that Did was, you? yes, right? I liked him in person. So that was the weird thing. Literally in person, I was also like, he's great. Like, we had a couple really great dates. We, he and I went to dinner and then we all hung out. Um, Did we went to a Preds game too, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we oh my God. Ew, that's like our thing. Sick. Wait, do you want to know something? There's a restaurant in Nashville. I'll just put it on blast. Husk. Where I take all my dates. <laughs> I've taken all my dates. I've been on like four dates there. No, five. I'm gonna hand back. They, they all know you. They for probably that. think I'm fucking crazy. I there was a low while where I would wear the same dress on a lot of dates. This like little Did you really? Yeah, I would. This like li- or I had a couple that I would go between, but I would wear the same dress and I would go at all the same restaurants. Oh wow. Multiple in a night? Yeah. <laughs> at a six PM dinner and a nine PM dinner. <laughs> You're just rolling them out. <laughs> Wait, people do that though. Look at me for a drink and then a dinner, a double header. I'm like, how do you do that? 
that. Yeah. Well, it gives you a good out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think there always should be like an out when you're going on a date that you're not sure how it's going to be. But then agree. like what happens when you. When you actually like the person. Yeah, when you really have fun. You got to cancel Which I kind of would always do on all of my dates. Even if I knew it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. I'm like, if I'm out, I'm dressed up, yeah. I'm drinking. Like it's going to. I'm going to have fun. fun I we couldn't can have... imagine if I'd be like, I got a 730. I got to check out. No, I know. Because we can have fun in any situation. Okay. But my point is, my point is, so he was here and we had a good time and then he left and we were going to see each other again. But then he started sending me these photos again. And I was like, I am so turned off. Like I can't unsee these photos. Right. And like everything in my body, like I'm good at listening to my gut. My whole body is like telling me like, end it, end it, end it. And you didn't want me to end it. And you really pushed me to keep going out with this guy. And here's what I think about. Had I been in a place of like being really unhappy, being alone or like ignoring my gut and just like trying to make something work. I never would have met Montana because that was, you know, a couple months, like two months before. And so I just think it's really important to be in a place of where you have to learn how to trust your body, like specifically your gut. But also you can't be so like and I want to say desperate, but just like in a place of lack where you're going to put up with things because then you could miss what's actually meant for you. Does that make sense? No, it absolutely. I mean, I know what you're saying, you know. Um, I think it's such a bummer when people go into dating situations where they feel any sort of like desperation, like, oh, I'm so sick of being alone. Or yeah. like, I've been going on so many bad dates that I kind of want to force this one, yes. even though you know that it doesn't feel right. But that's something that a lot of people do. I think it also comes with age. That's why I always get nervous when people like get married really young. I mean, you did 24. I did. Well, I'm divorced. But, like, so. I feel like a lot of times like in your 30s, like you really know more what you're looking for, especially a woman. I really feel like it's like yeah. um, you just you pay attention to the red red flags and you don't waste your time with that stuff. But well, that's the thing. It's like if there is one thing that you're like, uh I don't know. Because, it's going to get worse. Because, by the way, those photos are, I can guarantee, a a little picture into a much bigger issue of, like, the mommy issue shit. Like, how much attention do you Okay, well, that's what we kind of needed to get to because you were telling that story, and I know where you're going with it. Mm-hmm. But I think for everybody listening, it really bothered you, like, a it lot. It really bothered so me. So you were sending me the photos, or you were showing to me on the phone, and you were like – and. An, I know as someone so close to you, like that would never work for you. It no. definitely was needy. Even for me as a gay man, if someone was sending me those photos, I'd those be like, can we stop? Weird. Or, was- or, and how about this too? He said, he like sent me a horrible photo and I was like, oh, and then he said, so <laughs> he said something about like, couldn't wait to kiss me or something. And I didn't acknowledge it. And then I but like kept the conversation going. And he was like, Oh, you're not even going to say if you want to kiss me or not. And I was like, oh, I'm not, playing, I'm not playing this game. Well, I and no, do I don't. I hate no, that picture. Did you see what I you don't. said? Also, do those people not have good friends? Like I'd be like, if I showed one of my friends, those, they'd be like, Justin, stop doing it. You can't do a kissy like, face to a grown woman. But it was like crying faces. He'd be like in the gym, like being like, ah, like, what's <laughs> happening? What's happening? What's going on? Or when Montana sends me a picture, I'm like, holy shit, that's the hottest guy I've ever seen. Like, I need that. I need to be like, mm, as opposed to like, oh my God, I'd never send me a photo ever again. Well, you don't like that needy thing. I mean, that would never yeah. work for you. No. Some girls might think those photos are adorable. Oh God! Could they? I, I don't know, because <laughs> to me it was a red flag, and like there's bigger issues going on here. But I think that's the point of this: is like if there is something that is not sitting well with you, you can't ignore that. You have to acknowledge it and be okay being alone where you're just like I'm not going to force this I'm not going to make it work because someone better is coming I think it's- I think people are going to roll their eyes at you saying that I get what you're saying but I think that people. I think also what you're really trying to say is like you can't you because you're so good at this. I watch you like you're really good at feeling your gut and you're like, no, okay, not yeah. doing that or whatever. Yeah. A lot of people aren't. No, I'm not. No, putting no, you down. no, I know, I know I, what I know. you're saying, but I think like sometimes in like people don't even realize that like some people just put up with shit when they're dating. And if you if things bother you in the first couple of weeks of dating somebody, they're really going to bother you three months in. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of us like I think about the shit that I put up with in my 20s. Like I date someone like I can't stand this stuff about him and like it's not gonna go away it's no. not gonna get better there are things you can work on like communication yeah. things of course you're gonna butt heads on certain things you see how the person reacts to you calling them out about yes. things but i'm talking like personality things that are very different from what you're looking like for those icks and stuff yeah those icks are really i mean that's such like a tiktok thing i was like <laughs> what's an ick like let's name all the icks sending me gay photos is an ick <laughs> 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 
I also think in the beginning of our relationship, I don't think you really learn how someone is until you have those tough conversations. And that's when you can know, like, can we get through hard times together? Like, what's their communication style? Like, do they get nasty and get defensive and, like, want to attack me? Or, like, can they hear my side? Are they empathetic? Like, all of Did you think about that stuff in your 20s? Do you think that's important? Me either. And I also got... Which, God damn it, if I did, man, it would have been so, things would have been different. Yeah, yeah. but you can't change no, the past. No, I wouldn't. But, but the thing is, could you admit to this? I kind of got turned on by drama in my 20s. Like, I thought I it was I fun. Like, I, I, thought, I thought that meant I was in a serious relationship. You want to know why? Because it was both what we were used to from our family dynamics. 100%. Boom, girl. Toxic shit here, yeah. babe. <laughs> we my, had to work through that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. I'll tell you what, though, Montana. I'm like, thank fucking God, man. I've done the work, and now it's paying off. I finally have a good guy in my life. Such a good guy. And I was saying to you, you know, whatever ends up happening in this situation, I don't want to predict anything. But with Montana. Girl, but I think. <laughs> yeah, but I think. I, I really do. I don't want to say it right now. Um, but with somebody like Montana, I think you specifically, and I've already told you this, I think he's going to change your life forever yeah. in the sense of like, the way a guy like that can make you feel and feel mm-hmm. calm and you feel that different kind of energy. Like um, we were talking about this before. I think that you and I are so used to thinking we're attracted to like big personalities or we need to be around that kind of stuff. And I know for me, like when I met Scoot and all of a sudden I was around someone who was like calm and they like, I don't know, it changed my life. I could never date the whack jobs that I dated before Scoot no. ever again. I know. You know, it like changes something in you where you're like, oh, relationships can be easy. And it can, it can be calm. And yeah. I can still be myself. And right. this person will let me be myself. That was the biggest thing that I noticed about um, Montana the other night is I was really paying attention to how he reacted to you, you know, because mm-hmm. people come up to you when we're out. Yeah. Um, you and I are really loud and we get into like kind of crazy conversations or whatever. And I, I've seen in the past, like people that you've been on a date with or a guy that likes you will kind of look at us like, what the hell are they talking yeah. about? Or like kind of like check out, or he would try to match that energy, yes. other guys or whatever. Yes. Mark was so calm and he kind of like giggled at everything. And that was the thing that Scoot called out in the car after when we got in the car after, of course, Scoot and I were like two little gays. Like, I don't know what you think or whatever. <laughs> two little gays. And, um, <laughs> And Scoot is so good. I love hearing how Scoot thinks about people because yes. he pays really close attention. And Scoot's such a, a person about like energy, and he's really thoughtful with his words. Mm-hmm. So when we got, he's the, also always right about people. He's all, always if right. Scoot doesn't like somebody, I we, you have to run. <laughs> yeah. You have to run. Like yeah. that is a real thing. Like Scoot yeah. is all about feeling the mood out. But when we got in the car, Scoot immediately was like, Justin, like that makes so much sense to me he was like did you see how much like he like understands Kristen like he's not um he was like he did the biggest thing that he said that I thought was so interesting he's like he didn't try to suck the air out of the room and I think that Uh, every time we've been around you with a guy it's like the guy tries to be a bigger personality mm -hmm, than you or like mm -hmm. try to match it with me yeah it's a competition thing or and it doesn't feel authentic because if they really were that personality it would feel natural or whatever but Mark was so confident and just like calm yeah and also we are all so close and then scoot the three of us or whatever he could have kind of felt left out or whatever he was so just like in the mix and like really secure with who he was and he's fucking younger so say what you want about younger people it doesn't matter with the age it's a it's a confidence and like how comfortable they are in their own skin also how they're they are raised you know exactly yeah that's i've i've totally let go of the age thing because it literally is just a number he is way more mature way more like he we were talking he's got that real confidence we're like i'm not kidding every man in their 40s that i've dated it's all fake confidence we've kind of talked about this on a podcast before so i won't go into it again but like it age is literally just a number Mm -hmm. and i don't know if we've talked about this i know we've talked about this i can't remember if we talked about on the podcast or not but i almost wonder if this generation now like these kids coming up because of social media and because of how like dating culture is such a real thing right now. Of, and I, so I'm wondering if they are ahead of the time because they have access to this information that like we didn't have in our early 20s. I totally believe that's a real thing. I think uh, millennials, I'm technically still a millennial and you're definitely a millennial, am, yeah. right? We um, are totally different than the generation below us because they've had, act- they also, they talk about their feelings. Yeah. Guys are way more comfortable. Like they're still masculine. Mm. Everyone's like, where are the masculine men? People are still very much masculine or whatever. 
but masculine men are comfortable talking about feelings. They're not weirded out by things. They know to treat a woman with respect, yes. you know, because they've heard all of these stories that have happened. Um, and I'm like the worst person at talking about that kind of stuff, like being right with that kind of stuff. Well, I would... Let me tell you about masculine men. Yeah. <laughs> just with you. But I really think there is something about younger guys. Imagine a bra that you actually want to wear. Yeah, you probably can't think of one unless you already own one from Honey Love. Today's sponsor, Honey Love, has revolutionized the bra game. Say goodbye to underwire and bulky fabrics that trap heat. Honey Love's bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, they're made with fabric that's so soft, it feels like a second skin. You'll immediately feel and see the difference. It's so next level comfortable, you'll forget you're even wearing it time to spring clean your bra drawer. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. Get 20% off your entire order with my exclusive link. That's honeylove.com slash honest. Support my show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash honest. I got a few of these bras and guys, I am telling you, usually when I come home, you know, after being at the office or whatever I'm doing, my bra is the first thing I want to rip off. And I've actually been keeping these on and wearing them when I make dinner, which is unheard of for me. So they are very, very comfortable, which we love. Honey Love has you covered for the everyday look from workouts, weddings, and more. Honeys, you need this in your life. You've earned it. Trust me. So treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash honest. Use my exclusive link to get 20% off. That's honeylove.com slash honest. After you purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support my show and tell them that I sent you. Treat yourself to Honey Love because you deserve it. Dog lovers, listen up. I always love talking to you guys about the farmer's dog because I love them so much. Whether you have a few weeks old puppy or a senior who's seen multiple decades, any dog person like me knows the most valuable thing in the world is spending time with your pet. The farmer's dog can help to keep them healthy, which can give you more quality years with them. The farmer's dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food. It's recommended by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from human-grade ingredients in safe, clean kitchens. It's the best option for dogs at all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's just real food. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are extremely processed. They can use much lower quality ingredients than they claim to, which just drives me bonkers, and are extremely difficult to portion accurately. And their food comes with their name on it. So if you do have kids like I do, I know my daughter Sailor loves to be the one to feed the dogs because it just makes it fun and exciting for them. So it doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health, helping you live more healthy, happy, and full years together. So guys, you can get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash honest to get 50% off your first box plus free shipping. Let's talk about ZipRecruiter. I am such an impulsive person and I'm someone who just has to have whatever I want right now. For example, I decided to go to Stagecoach. So boom, I decided to get tickets that second because those things go quickly and you can't wait. You can't sleep on these things because when you want the best, you have to act quickly or someone else will get it instead. I am a planner. I'm an organizer. So I am booking shit months and months out. It's like if you're hiring for your business, you want to find the most talented people for your open roles before the competition scoops them up. So what's the best way to do that? ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter finds qualified candidates fast. And right now, you can try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash honest. ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology makes center stage to identify top talent for your roles. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology starts showing you qualified people for it. As a business owner, I mean, this is just music to my ears. There is nothing better than getting really qualified people as fast as you possibly can. Amp up your hiring performance with ZipRecruiter and find the best fast. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a qualified candidate within the first day, okay? Just go to this exclusive web address right now to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash honest. 
Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash honest. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Okay, well, I've got a cute story for you about Montana. So we did go out on Broadway, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Which I'm probably going to be going to Broadway a little bit more than I used to in the past. You just went the other night after the Preds game. I, oh, yeah. Oh, I was bro, like, are you okay, so let's finish our story about the Preds. So we all were hanging out. The Preds game was great. And then you and Scoot went home and Montana and I hit Broadway. Which is literally just so you like but by one, the way like well because by the way i had a babysitter which is far and few between now and the well, game that's what i was telling you yeah. i was like you go out you have a babysitter yeah. like go have a good night or whatever i'm like i can't go to broadway i, I know well, i can't stand in the line and be like no, can you get four in well we did <laughs> we got a 24 yeah <laughs> i could never do that ew <laughs> what have we ever done that <laughs> never but that's oh what God. i think broadway is now every time i see broadway it's just <laughs> packed there's lines everywhere I know. it gives me the worst anxiety well i won't go unless i know i can get in right away sorry oh, so, i just oh, okay. won't okay, cool, i've got cool, contacts cool. for oh, the future sweet. don't worry <laughs> but it was like a random tuesday night so broadway wasn't packed but also because it was just montana and i we went into like some of the smaller little bars like we weren't like going to jason aldean's like oh, okay, at cute. a table like it was more just like us just getting a drink together or a few drinks but i had a babysitter and the game ended at 9 30 so i was like fuck that i'm gonna go get a drink i'm having yeah, fun also you know like in the beginning stages of our relationship like it's fun you, oh just, my you God, drink a little more so than fun. you usually do um and by the way oh man i don't know how the fuck i do this but so we ended up going out really late really late and i live 40 minutes from downtown so then had to drive home i didn't get go to bed probably till like 2 45 woke up at 6 a.m made my fucking kids breakfast packed their goddamn lunches and took them to school You're i was like super mom how am i alive and awake right now but i did it but anyways um you got driven home. You didn't drive home. I was not. I never drink and drive. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I got driven. So another time when Montana and I were out on Broadway, we went with like his crew of people. Um, I was wearing heels <laughs> because, you know, it's what I do. And I know better when I go on Broadway. But you're standing around typically the whole night. By the end of the night, my feet hurt so fucking bad. We're like, I literally couldn't walk. And he was like, take my shoes. I was like, I'm not going to take your shoes. I was like, what are you talking about? He literally took his shoes off, though. And I was and he was walking around Broadway in socks so that I could wear his shoes so my feet didn't hurt. Isn't that cute? That's the cutest thing ever. But you know what my favorite thing about that is? Like, you have a shoe thing. Can you tell that story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why is this it. a thing like with your yeah, feet hurting? You? Do you have bunions? No. <laughs> no, this story. Oh my god, you guys. This is one of my favorite stories. It's this probably is a good story. <laughs> Talk about fucking toxic. Okay, so in my early 20s, god, I was probably I don't know why I always think about this story. <laughs> I was actually probably 19. I can't I was 19 or 20. Okay, so I had been dating this hockey player at the time and um Oh God! I wish I could say who it was. He well, had, he just was dating somebody else famous. Like he got a, he was married to someone else and got a divorce, and there was um, violence involved, which that will check out after I tell you guys this story. So okay, so he was staying at a hotel at the Four Seasons in LA, and we had gone out all night, and I had jeans tucked into boots. You know, it's like when I was very trendy, and so we go back to his ho- <laughs> back to his hotel, and we're making out, and I lay down on the bed, and I like stuck my foot out. I see my slippers, <laughs> and I was like, "Can you pull my boot off?" He fucking snapped on me and goes, what the fuck do you think this is? A power trip? Take off your own fucking boots. And I was like, <laughs> what? I get shocked every time you tell this story. Like, what the fuck? Jo- no, like, that's like deep issues. Like, what oh, happened to you? No, he 100% is abusive. And thank God. But I, what does that trigger in someone? Does he think that you're know. bossing him around? I think. Yeah, I think it's like a power thing. But like you guys, when I tell you, but I was like so scared in the moment that I, I honestly didn't say much. I think I just and I didn't want to be like, fuck you. I'm out of here. Because like that, I think then he probably would have actually like. Done oh something. Do you know what I'm gosh. saying? Like you have to be really careful in those situations. So I just instead wanted to just be like, okay. But obviously I never hung out with him ever again. But those are things where it's like, whoa. The fact that he thought that he could act like that with you though, because you've always had that personality. Yeah. But I'm, I guess like, like I'll that... beat you up. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but really. Like... I mean, I yeah, I don't know what I would do in that situation, quite honestly. But yeah, what the fuck? Wait, that story went dark. It seemed more funny when I was thinking about it, but it was like No, it was pretty dark. <laughs> Oh, you want to talk about that? Okay. <laughs> I just, every time you say it, it's the weirdest thing. But then also, there was also somebody, a similar thing. There was somebody else here in town. Wait, I don't remember this one. Say it. Um, 
Oh. And remember his, like that you um, triggered this emotion in him. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God. But that was, okay. That's so, a similar personality though, to like, let a girl like get you to that place. Like, you know, okay. So is that like mommy issues when guys act like that? Okay. So uh, let me explain this story. And then I, I don't, cause I don't know. Okay. So this other guy that I dated in Nashville a few years ago, um, we had gone out and then we went back to his house and he told me I was degrading. And I was like, degrading. I was like, no one in my life has ever said that to me. Like, am I sassy? Sure. But like, like degrading I've never ever because been accused being, of that because like, I was being playful with him and that's a guy calling who, him out for yeah. shit but if you're insecure you can't handle that exactly. you don't got insecure guys do not like me right but he snapped on me same thing I remember sitting in his kitchen and I was like whoa I just have to like m- fucking calm him down right now because I'm actually again like kind of scared what did you say like how did oh you my con- god well, you know what happened so I was like oh my god I'm so sorry like I literally that's n- I'm never my intention like blah 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 and then and then wait what did I say and then I was like fuck it and I said um <laughs> I, <laughs> said, all back. I said do you think this has anything to do with your insecurity or good something? for you though yeah, by the way fuck this guy and then I got the fuck out of there but like yeah these guys man that when you sense like some anger issues that kind of like when they can snap on you you gotta get the fuck out of there that's so scary it really is kind of scary and this by the way this guy is a i mean he's well known he you know very well known. very well known yeah you gotta be these guys are so that's why i appreciate montana <laughs> okay yeah so he could let stories you- <laughs> like this <laughs> We are so the crazy. The shit I've been through. <laughs> also, we're like all over the place. We were just on Montana <laughs> on Broadway a few minutes ago. And then we just went through two other guys. Like a diff- uh, sorry. Oh. oh, my God. Wait. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Let me see what else we're going to talk so about. So you were wearing his boots walking through Broadway? He had on Nike. So I was wearing... I mean, we were leaving the the, the bar. But um, yeah, I was wearing his Nikes. Did you go to a lesbian bar? <laughs> That's <laughs> Lipstick cute. lounge. <laughs> You got your Nikes on. Yeah, my Nikes and my leather pants. Um, but I just thought that was like so fucking. He's literally walk. We're trying to get a, a car, an Uber, out of there, and he was walking around in his socks. I'm like holding my heels, wearing his big ass Nikes. I just think it's funny that you're on had a Broadway picture of that. Like that. in huge Nikes. Yeah, like train wreck. <laughs> So I was saying to you, like, this being somebody who is so different for you, like, this is a totally different guy situation, whatever. I was asking you earlier, I'm like, is there anything that kind of stands out to you that you're kind of, like, unsure about? You know, because it is so different. Yeah, yeah. And you told me that there's really not. Like, it just feels so natural and comfortable Mm -hmm. yeah and i think sometimes that in itself can be a little bit scary like why does this feel like so like chill like does that freak you out at all no i think because i've had so many uh, shitty experiences yeah i've had a lot of (laughs) shitty experiences i also like before i met montana like i knew exactly what i wanted like obviously the age thing that you know wasn't what i was manifesting but but he is everything that i've been wanting and yeah it's still say what that is (laughs) <laughs> speak up girl don't hold back now i want to hear about it again all right <laughs> like what are the things that are really important to you right now because i think that it's interesting when it changes for people okay so what's really important to me is well i've always said someone who takes accountability right for their actions their whatever is going on but someone who's just like really supportive and like lets me be me and doesn't want to like steal my shine. And he's quite literally said to me, like, I don't want anything to be about me. Like I want it to be about you. And it's real. Like I could see it. It is. When we we're together. And no other guy has done that. Every other guy has tried to diminish my light and push me down because everything else in my life has been a threat to them. So again, it goes back to like that real confidence. Um, he's manly. Obviously, he's so fucking hot, and I'm, like, so attracted to him, but he's, like, really manly, too. He has that real manly energy. Like, you really could see him working on a tractor, Mm -hmm. you know, and then he looks like that. But it's, like, you know how some guys will do that thing? Like, like, yeah, bro, like, oh, yeah, I'll I'll lift that thing up. And it just seems so forced and fake. I'm, like, nobody does that anymore. (laughs) Nobody talks like that. Like, people don't try to make their voices lower or whatever. Like, he's very, like, masculine. And, like, I don't know. There's something so confident about him yeah. and it's real and it sounds so stupid saying that out loud but when you see it in person it really stands out to you when something feels really authentic i just feel like i've been around so many guys lately who do that whole thing like yeah bro, like trying to yeah. like they try to be that masculine yes. thing and they're so not and then like talking from all like oh you're actually really insecure yeah exactly you know, like, they start saying things like he's just a solid really good guy easy to be around exactly he's a really good guy i think we're a good balance because he's very calm very grounding 
And he's really, he's sweet to me. Like, he's just so sweet to me. He's so fucking sweet to my kids, you know? Like, all of those things are really important to me. I think, too, <clears> like, <throat> for you, I think you haven't had, like, a buddy in a yeah. while. Like, he's, like, a friend. Yeah, like, we have fun together. Yeah, we're, like, we're, yeah, it's, like, it's fun. It yeah. feels, like, natural. Like, yeah. um, and I don't think you've had that for a while. And it's really supportive, like, on both ends. I think, like, we both really support each other, you mm -hmm. know? The one thing that I'm not actively thinking about it, but it's definitely like in the back of my mind is, you know, he wants to have a kid. <laughs> Are you choking? <laughs> Sorry. The a, what? Glad I take a sip of water oh at that point. God, yeah. Oh. So, you know, I'm, I'm <laughs> mulling it over. <laughs> It's I see you have another kid. And my goodness, does. could you imagine that baby? That's why I might have to do it. <laughs> Kristen, that would be our retirement. That baby would be famous. <laughs> that baby would be, be modeling. So, yeah, gorgeous. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I've been actually talking to my kids too, like, you know, what would you guys what do you guys think about that? All of my kids are like, yes, do it. And I think because my biggest thing is like Sailor, my daughter, my youngest is eight. Right. Like the thought of going back and starting all over again is like, that's a lot, man. But my kids are old enough now where they could help. That would be nice. I think. To, oh, yeah, that's a good point. If he ends up really being the one that wouldn't. Like, I would have a kid. Are you for real thinking about this? Yeah, I have to. I mean, wow, yes. Wow, like, I love it. We're, yeah, I think this is, it's become pretty serious, this relationship, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Does he know? Just kidding. He very no. much knows. <laughs> <laughs> he has no idea we're even dating. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> that hard launch, I didn't even ask him about it. I just threw up that picture. <laughs> He's like, wait, what? <laughs> um... That is so wild that you're bringing that up, though. And that just makes me think even more that it's like, yeah, you feel something feels good. And like you're open to the conversation and you know that it could be a possibility if this goes it, somewhere. It would ha if, if it's going to last, I would have to have a kid. You're so good at making babies. I'm good too. at making babies. Yeah. <laughs> I figure, why baby stop now? <laughs> <laughs> you're a good baby maker. Also like, <sighs> yeah, whatever. Okay. Well, and I guess like if I had another one, obviously it would be my last. So I would really just take it all in and enjoy it. And I, I did that with Sailor because I you know thought she'd be my last. But I think it would be different now to like, I don't know, go back... Cause like I had all three of mine so close together that like it was pure chaos. Like I blacked out for those years. Like I don't even remember it where now it would just be like, I would enjoy I it. I have no idea what it's like to have a baby, obviously, but that actually makes a lot of sense to me. Like when you're at a slower part in your life mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, you could just really enjoy the whole process. You're not trying to manage three kids going on yeah. and then like, <clears throat> and I think your stuff like, right. And I think he'd be so hands-on and would just like really help me a lot which would be nice but i mean that is a reality too i mean if you guys go the long run or the long haul whatever if you guys stay together that's I'd have very to have much a, I would a reality have a kid. Yeah, i'd have to have a kid I'm, oh. i wouldn't like want to and by the way i wouldn't because i wouldn't want to like rob him of that like he should have kids in his life you know absolutely so, yeah yeah I mean, we'll see. Listen, like it's literally been a couple months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when you know, you know. <laughs> no, I love him so much. And my take on that night, you know, we were talking about the importance of like somebody coming into our life because we are so close. Yeah. We travel and stuff. And it was like it was so much better than I had imagined. I, for whatever reason, I just had a good feeling about it yeah. just because I saw how excited you were. And we've obviously been talking through this whole thing. And there were things like I always am like afraid to seem annoying to you in this part of our friendship, <laughs> because when you were talking about it, I was, I, I'm constantly saying like, Kristen, it makes sense. Like, yeah. I get it. I get it. And I don't want to try to take away from you telling the story. But like it really as your friend, it really makes sense to me, like what yeah. you're saying and what you're experiencing. And I'm like, fuck, yeah, Kristen, just enjoy it. Like, go with it. Like, this is what it can and should feel like yeah. at times when you're just like when things make sense or whatever yeah um and then seeing you guys together it's really freaking cute like it's just it makes so much sense like yeah. it felt so natural and normal um yeah. so i'm pumped i mean yeah ah, can you like you go back to like the um crosby hotel in new york in december when i was like should i just fucking dm him you're like fuck it let's just do it <laughs> to where we are now it's kind of wild <laughs> Yeah, it is. But everything in your life is wild. That actually feels like the most tame thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that we've dealt with, that feels pretty tame. <laughs> Boring. <laughs> but I no, just it is mean, like, because you like just 
well, sending we, that DM, having no idea what it was going to turn into. Well, and we were all being like so playful and funny that night. Like yeah. never in a million years did I think that you'd be dating a Montana boy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, I didn't think it was going to be real. Because of the Z? Yeah, yeah, the Z threw me off. When I found out it was a Z. Oh, gosh, she never actually dated. But um, no, that part is interesting because we were being so funny that night and like whatever. Um, But I'm telling you, that's sometimes what happens when it's the one that you're like, oh, whatever. This is just going to be like a funny flirt or whatever. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, why does this feel really normal? And why is this one making a lot of sense? Yeah. Well, especially because I was like, I'm never, I'm never dating again. That's it. And then here we are. I'm in a fucking relationship. (laughs) Well, I love that for you. I do too. I'm happy. So if you're still hating on it, you can go fuck yourself. (laughs) Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. (laughs) Um, Okay. What else? We love Montana. <laughs> <laughs> we really do love him. And I'm so excited for you. I'm like so happy about Thanks. it. Um, I think it's so interesting too that like you, I mean, this is who you are. You've always shared everything. But like even as I'm sitting here and we're talking about it, I'm like, it's so funny to me that you're sharing this with your audience. But I also think it's like so beautiful because people have grown up with you. Yeah. People have been in situations like this. You, For whatever reason, your love life is really interesting. People who have <laughs> yeah. grown up with yeah. you. And I mean, I think it's because yeah. everyone feels like they, they are me. your friend. Yeah. They know you. You know, yeah. you've, you've shared mm-hmm. so much. So this only makes sense that you kind of talk about these things or whatever. Well, and I hope... Honestly, like if I can inspire any woman to just not settle and do what you ultimately want to do, because if I was thinking about what people's perceptions were, I wouldn't be dating him. Right. You have to like literally live your life for you and not not care what anyone else thinks, I think is ultimately what it is, too. So if if me sharing my story can help one woman or man, then, uh, you know, that makes me happy. Work, Oprah. (laughs) <laughs> love it girl words of words of wisdom yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right i love you guys <laughs> bye you guys we'll see you next week bye guys <laughs>